Welcome D-Lab everybody. Hey guys, have you ever had to work on the internal VFO of one of these Johnson transmitters? If you have, you realize that they pretty much set that module and built everything around it. So to gain access, you pretty much got to tear the whole transmitter apart. And then after you have completed your repair, the question is, did I really fix it? And the only way to know is to put the whole transmitter back together. And if you didn't fix it, guess what? It comes back apart. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you guys a step-by-step -step procedure of how to verify just that VFO module is operating correctly before you put that transmitter back together. And at the end, if you'd like a copy of the procedure, send me an email and I'll get it out to you. For this video, I'm going to be following my own written instructions that I have for the VFO module. So this is the Johnson VFO module verification after repair. The purpose is to verify the VFO operates properly after repair and before reassembly of the transmitter. Equipment required. We have a Heath kit high voltage power supply. This is a model IP2717 and a Heath kit IM2420 frequency counter. You're also going to have some assorted jumpers and a plastic screwdriver for adjusting the capacitors in the VFO. Alright, let's go over a few cautions before we start the procedure. Number one, the Valiant will not be powered up for this test. Do not plug it in. The test only applies to the VFO module. The panel meter does not have to be connected to perform this test. Use a plastic knob for the VFO main tuning and pay particular attention to the handling of the coupler behind it. It's very fragile and really difficult to source if you break it. There is high voltage present and exposed during this test. Okay, let's get into the procedure. Okay, step one, you're gonna disconnect the 6.3 volt AC from the 6AU6 pin four. That's a green wire. So pull that wire away from the tube socket. Step two, you're gonna connect the 6.3 volt AC source from our Heathkit power supply to pin 4 of the 6AU6. Low side is going to go to chassis. When you turn on the power supply you'll see the filament on just that tube light. Step 3 we're going to connect the high voltage. So the B plus is going to go to the low side of R3 the 18K resistor which feeds the OA2 voltage regulator. Low side is also going to go to chassis. Next, you're going to connect your frequency counter. Low side is going to go to chassis. And the high side, you're just going to use a jumper wire and make a loop around the 6AU6 so they can induce the frequency. You don't want to connect it directly because it will shut down the VFO. Okay, you're going to set the valiance oscillator switch to the VFO position and leave it there for the remainder of the test. Next, you're going to turn on the B plus switch of our high voltage power supply, adjust the B plus to 250 volts, and verify that you see the OA2 light up. That indicates that we have high voltage. Now we're going to check the outputs of the VFO. There's actually only three of them, okay? So 160 and 80 share approximately 1.75 to two megacycles. 40 meter through 10 is about seven to 7.4 megacycles. And then 11 meters all by himself is 6.725 to 6.84 megacycles. So we're gonna start out on the 80 meter band. We're gonna take our tuning. We're gonna go from the low side to the high side and make sure that we have output from the VFO, which we do. Now we'll advance to 40 meters. You see it jumped up to just under 7 megacycles. We're going to adjust that up. You're going to see about 7.4. That's good. Okay. Now, if we go up, 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 and then you're going to feel another click. We just went to 11 meter band. So there's the low side, and there's the high side. At this point, we're not going to worry about calibration because we have the cover off and there's a lot of things that can induce error into our reading. The purpose is 
is to make sure that we have output from the VFO before we make the mistake of putting her all together and saying, oh my God, I don't have output on this band. I get to tear the whole transmitter back apart. Also, while you're in here, you want to take a plastic screwdriver and verify that each of the calibration capacitors are working. Okay. So the calibration adjustments over here would be the 160 and 80 meter high adjustment. And the low adjustments here. 40 meter. My high adjustment is right back here. And the low is behind it. You'll find that the low adjusts don't do a whole lot. It's dependent on setting your high frequency and the low side is the trimmer. Let me go up here to 11 meters and he is all by himself. There's no low adjustment, just the high. And you can see that works too. So at this point, we verified that the VFO has output on all three bands and it's adjustable. Last step, turn off your power supply, disconnect the test setup, reconnect the green wire that you removed to pin four of the 6AU6. Final calibration requires a cover installed and time for the VFO to warm up for stabilization.